What's up everybody? It's Kelsey Brianna J here with a little bit of a hoarse voice, but I'm here with the new Natasha Denona Safari palette and of course, you already know I'm going to give you a review. The packaging for the palette, super dope, very beautiful packaging. I picked mine up at Sephora. This is on sale at Sephora, Beautylish, as well as on Natasha Denona's website. So this palette retails for $129. Pretty on par with her other eyeshadow palette prices. This palette is limited edition. So here is the actual palette. It's that safari type green. I love the packaging. It's very beautiful. It says matte across the top. It's in that really sturdy plastic packaging. And Natasha Denona gives us huge mirrors. This entire section here is a mirror. I don't want to blind you guys, but just know that this whole thing is a mirror. Here are the eyeshadows. 15 eyeshadows and in each eyeshadow there's 2.5 grams of product which this went back to the original amount of products in her palettes. It was a huge deal last time that the Tropic palette only offered 1.5 grams of products but now we're back to the 2.5 grams of products which is awesome. Like I said the name of this is the Safari palette and the description of this palette on Sephora.com says that after receiving a huge amount of requests Natasha decided to design the perfect matte palette. The color scheme is safari inspired, offering wearable warms, cool muted tones, and unique medium to dark shades to complement your current collection. Natasha creates her palettes so that any three shades in a row can be used to create an entire look. The top row features cool muted and gray tones, the middle row is warmer tones, and the bottom row has highly requested rich reddish tones. Monochromatic looks are simple to create by using colors horizontally and polychromatic looks can be created by using colors vertically. It also says that these eyeshadows are not dusty and come in a zero fallout formula which is ideal and yet very hard to find in matte textures. As the description stated, this is her first time doing an all matte eyeshadow palette. Normally Natasha Denona is going to come with those shimmers. These are the creamy matte formulas so they are designed to be a little bit more creamy creamy and a little bit more easy to blend and more pigmented than other matte eyeshadows. All of our matte eyeshadows are not formulated the same. Based on the ingredient list on the back as well as their performance, I found these matte eyeshadows in this Natasha Denona palette to be most comparable to her Tropic palette. I did a little bit of further research because the first ingredient on all of the eyeshadows in the Safari palette as well as in the Tropic palette is, and I hope that I'm pronouncing this correctly, Synthetic Fluoroflagopite. What that is, is it's a fluorine substituted mineral produced at very high temperatures and it's composed of magnesium, aluminum, silicate sheets, a weakly bound together potassium. And so basically this is a filler. This is a very thinly formulated type eyeshadow. It builds up pretty slow, but when it builds up, it does get good pigmentation, but it does take a while and it is a little bit drier. The color scheme of this palette is very interesting as well. Well, like she said, there's a mix of cool tones, warm tones, and more neutral tones. And you can go by the columns to create looks, or if you go by rows, it's different undertones in each row. I did a mix of eyeshadows in this palette just to give you guys a pretty well balanced look. These are more muted type colors, but for me, if you take out these three colors, this palette is full of colors that I use in my crease and colors that I use to deepen up my outer V. These aren't typically colors that I go for to wear on the lid, so for me, this is going to be a pairing type palette. I have to use another palette in conjunction with this palette to feel satisfied in my eye look. I I did my eye look totally using this palette today just for demonstration purposes but for me these colors are a little bit too dark and I wouldn't typically wear them on my lid. This palette will be beautiful on a deeper complexion just because of the richness of the tones of the color selected. This did remind me of the Subculture palette just because of the color selection and I know a lot of people had a hard time creating different looks with this palette. I can see the same thing happening with this palette. We'll be able to mix and match colors from this palette together and like she said you can go by row or by column to find inspiration for colors to use together but I want to go ahead and jump into swatches of this palette you guys can see each shade row by row I swatch it dry on my arm and then I'm gonna jump into the eyeshadow demonstration and I will walk you through how I achieved the look that I am rocking right now enjoy
going to go in with the color Aya. And I'm going to take this color all over my lid to set my base. And next I'm going to take the color Tamarind and I'm taking this color right in my crease. And this is going to be my transition color. So back and forth. Make sure you tap off your brush so you don't get any fallout. Then I'm going to move into the color Savannah. Apply that right underneath the color Tamarind. And this is going to deepen up our crease color. So take your time with this. And I want this color to be pretty opaque. But I still want our transition color to be apparent, so don't take it up too far. Keep it pretty concentrated. That looks pretty blended. Once you have that all together, I actually am going to go over my eyelid and clean it up a little bit with more base. I'm going to use my Born This Way concealer in the color Sand and a Sonia Kashuk brush. So all I'm going to do is apply more concealer and clean up the outline of the shape that I want my eyeshadow to be. I want it to be a little bit more oval and I also want it to flare out a little bit. So once you get your shape together for how your concealer is going to be on your lid, as you can see I winged mine out and did a cut crease. Go back over that concealer with the shade Aya to set it. Make sure not to cover up anything outside of where you applied the concealer. Now I'm going to take a little bit more of Aya and use this as my inner tear duct highlight color. Stay within the lines. It's very important to keep this step very neat. And right next to that I'm going to pick up the color Desert Date and pack this right next to that shade. And like I said, keep this pretty neat. I'm going to stop that shade about here and just pack it on until it's fully opaque. Next, I'm going to go in with the color Amara. Right next to Desert Date, I'm going to pack this color on. Again, make sure to blend it next to Desert Date and all the way up. Make sure you fill in that blank area. So once you have that blended out, now let's move on to the color Tribe. And I'm just going to fill this in on a little bit more of the lid space. Lastly, I'm going to go in with the color, I believe it's pronounced Maasai. I'm going to end off the eye look with this. I actually am going to switch to a pencil brush just so I make sure that I keep this detailed and neat. Be very careful with this. Got a little bit of fallout with that one. I lie. I'm going to go in with an even smaller brush. This is the Wayne Goss 07 brush again. A clean one and go in and draw where I want this eyeshadow to be. I'm going to go ahead and add liner, mascara, and lashes and I'll be right back. Then here's what the eye look looks like by itself. Now I'm going to go in with a pencil brush and the color Tamarind. Trace that along the lower lash line. I'm going to take this all the way across simply because the top already has so much going on I don't want to make the bottom super busy so I don't want it to compete just to compliment okay so this is the final look so overall I like the look that I created I think that it's very pretty but these are a little bit of a drier formula so just keep that in mind if you're interested in trying Natasha Denona eyeshadow palettes this is not a palette that I would tell you to start with if you haven't bought anything from the brands before if you're not familiar with Natasha Denona I actually am going to do a video 
ranking the Natasha Denona palettes and doing an overview on them. But this one is one that I would say get if you are already a collector, you're already a fan, and you want to complete your collection. Otherwise, I think that this is not a beginner-friendly eyeshadow palette. I think that this is more so for someone who already has a skill set there. And for those who are able to work with a color palette like this and are able to blend the colors together without turning them muddy because this is a difficult palette to navigate. Let me know your opinions on this palette. Have you tried Natasha Denona products before? And I will talk to you all in my very next video. Smoochas. Bye.